All right, so welcome everyone um, to this week's edition of Get Seen, Be Heard. I am Christina Daves with PR for Anyone, and my co-host is Karen Yankovich of Uplevel Media. And we love this weekly show that we're doing just to help you guys get exposure for your businesses, you know, using combination of publicity and social media. And we bring on really cool guests. Um, we do have a YouTube channel that you can subscribe to, but Karen, I don't even know if we can direct them to that yet. Can we? No. Is there a way? I mean, okay. We can send, we'll a link. We can, we can so, send them a link. Yeah. So we'll, we'll put, I'll put a link in the box here in a minute, but, um, Okay, yay. And um, our guest I is you. Jessica Kupferman. Let's, can we hear Hi. you? Yeah, yes. I can hear you. Okay. I can see awesome. you. Yay. So that was probably a function of having too many tabs open. Okay. Well, that's okay. Oh, interesting. So Jessica, what we do is um, Karen and I kind of just spend a few minutes just talking about our industries, what's new, what's exciting, what can we, you know, help our viewers with, and then we will dive into everything that you do. Right on. Uh, all right, so Karen, what's up, girl? <laughs> so, okay, so like if you have, if you didn't hear, I'm actually at, um, I did a talk this morning at Boston Scientific in Boston, so I'm in one of their cool little conference rooms here right now doing the show from there. Um, so that was kind of fun. And what I wanted to talk about, so Christina and I like to talk a little bit about what's happening in our respective world. And I wanted to, so one of the questions I get asked a lot and my answer is, beats the living shit out of me almost all the time, is how do I use Snapchat for my business? Yeah. And I go, I don't know. I Snapchat my daughter. She Snapchats me. My friends from college Snapchat a little bit. But I got a text from my daughter yesterday and said, check out the Rockets on Snapchat. Now, Christina and I actually went to see the Christmas yeah. show last year together with our daughters. And so I'm like, okay, cool. You guys have to check it out. So go to, if you have Snapchat, search for it's Rockets, just plural, R-O-C-K-E-T-T-E-S or yeah. S or whatever. And they have an unbelievable Snap story of their show. And it blew my mind. First of all, maybe you want to go buy tickets again, even though I just saw it last year. Um, but I thought this is a great use of Snapchat for business, right? Because here you have people, I'm sharing it with all of you, right? And my daughter and her friends are texting each other it and, it's made me almost want to go buy tickets again, even though I don't typically go every single year. So I thought this is why this is a great use of Snapchat. So check it out, you guys. If you thought about using Snapchat, look it up, look up the Rockettes, watch their Snap story. It's unbelievable. That's awesome. Check awesome. it out. Awesome. Well, and I was at um, a conference yesterday. I went to the Ink Iconic conference, which if it comes to your city, I'm telling you guys, it was amazing. It was um, Marcus Limonis of The Prophet, Kevin O'Leary, um, Bert Jacobs of Life is Good. Um, they did a panel with um, Jennifer Fleiss of Rent the Runway, uh, the Soul Cycle Girls. I mean, it was amazing. But the theme that ran through it consistently, I'm going to write a blog post about it next week, was um, authenticity. That successful entrepreneurs are authentic and they relate to, to their customer and they relate to their audience. And the other thing that was really cool is, especially with Life is Good, they did no advertising. This was guerrilla marketing. They literally took their t-shirts and went on the street and printed them and sold 24 and then printed more. And he tells this great story. The guy from Life is Good, his name is Jake. And they sold like 24 shirts to a store in Maine. And the lady calls and she sells a lot of ice cream. And she says, does Jake, does Jake eat ice cream? And he's like, he can. And then the next thing you know, there's Jake with an ice cream phone. And then she said something like, my sister owns a store in Maine and everybody rides bikes can Jake ride a bike? And he's like, well, he can if you pay us for it. Like he figured it out, but that's how, but it was literally, you know, guerrilla marketing. I talk about that all the time, but you know, rent the runway. She said that they kind of exploded early on just with their friends and, you know, getting it out there. And they got an article in the New York times, you know, just, and it was creative kind of this business concept. And they, they did a video of all their girlfriends getting dressed up and just thinking outside of the box to get publicity and get buzz for your business. And it was pretty cool that, that almost all of them talked about something similar. So, I love that. I love yeah. that. I know you've used Rent the Runway. I don't know. I have to try on 60,000 dresses before I find one that I like. I can't imagine picking one out of a catalog and it getting mailed to me and going, oh, well, I love we, it. But we I love do have concept. a store. And there's one in New York and there's one in Georgetown. So you can kind of go and try on the designer and see if you like them or not. 
Okay. But yeah, my dream was always. Well, Christina, I was going to say my dream was always to wear a bad we... Mishka dress, and now you can do it for like seventy five dollars. <laughs> So before yeah. we introduce Jessica, tell everybody where you wore your bagley, your bagley. Oh, this day. summer. Tell everybody where you wore that dress. I mean, where I wore it. This summer. Yes. What did you? What did you? Yes. What did you get a dress for rent from rental? Well, Home because before? last year I won Entrepreneur of the Year award, so this year I got to present it to the new winner, and I got to get all fancy, and it was a lot of fun. Wait, didn't you rent it to go to California for a specific? Oh, event? that's another one. Yeah, you mean when I went to the Oscars? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, right. When I was at the Oscars. Not the official right. Oscars. What a big Oscars party. So, yeah, it was fabulous. <laughs> Life is fun. So, welcome, welcome, Jessica. I know that uh, you and Karen know each other. I'm so excited to meet you and to get nice to know you. Um, tell us. Tell us about yes. you, what you do, who you are, and then we'll, then we'll dive deep and get some meat. Who am I? What do I do? Um, well, I am Jessica Kupferman. I have been in internet marketing for a super long time. And I don't mean online marketing like info products. I mean, um, I've worked in online advertising since 1999. Um, I used to sell banner advertising on websites when people, a lot of people didn't even have websites, but I was working for the local newspaper. And then um, I've done a lot of advertising sales jobs and, and marketing jobs. And then um, my, um, I started my own business in 2005. It was a design business and I did design and then morphed that into design and social media consulting and then morphed that into, uh-oh, we lost Karen. Yeah, keep um, going. She'll be back. And then design and social media consulting. And then when I started a podcast, people started asking me how I was doing my podcast. So I started helping mostly women, but some men do a podcast as well. So I am, you know, a true jack of all trades, but I hate to say master of none, although, you know, I do have my fingers in a lot of pies. But basically what I do is help people who want to do online business better. Um, and also if they want to start a show, I help them create a podcast and then also monetize. Um, and that goes for bloggers and podcasters by helping with um, media kits and sponsorship and how to um, do sort of um, monetization without creating and launching all the time. Fascinating. Okay, so yeah, let's start from yeah. square one. You want to do a podcast. Like what, what would you recommend? You know, like I'll tell you how Karen and I started. Would you, you called me okay. on a Monday and you said, get seen, be heard because we do a workshop on this. She goes, we need to make this a podcast. So uh, we're going to start this Thursday. Let's find a guest. Or we started live first, and then she's like, we need to find guests. I said, okay. <laughs> Probably um, not the best way to plan world. this, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's not terrible. It's really not. I mean, you're. Well, Jessica's probably thinking, I yeah, think she finally too. freaking did it. Because almost I've been talking to Jessica for like a year yeah, about so, the I mean, podcast. Karen, so, um, has been dabbling in, in podcasting. Wow. Yeah. Um, I know it's, I'm, I'm sure it was just a time issue, but um, for a little while she was in, I met her through my podcasting school for women. Um, and I know she's just busy and hasn't had a chance to do it, but I'm glad she figured out a way to just get it up because I think the barrier to entry for most people is like the time it takes to launch and stuff. So like when I started my show, like I went from idea to iTunes in like two weeks because I became obsessed with having it up oh, by Karen. I became obsessed with having it done and I did everything I could to have it done. And then of course I'm the type of person that creates like so much more work for myself. Like I can't just do a blab and put it on YouTube and then like send the audio to iTunes. Like I have to have a whole website and an about page. Like I'm, I'm a little insane about how I launch things. It actually can be very counterproductive, but, um, yeah, so so I launched very quickly, and then I sort of learned some things even really late. Like, for example, cover art in iTunes has to be really attractive or they'll never feature you. Like, I didn't figure that out for, like, a good year. As soon as I changed my cover art, it was in top of, like, what's hot. But I don't – I mean, I would probably hit new and noteworthy for, like, five minutes because my cover art was literally, like, white with a logo. It was terrible. Right. Well, you know what, Jess? That's where we're stuck right now, and that's so funny yeah. that you mentioned yeah. that because I spent this morning creating – cover art and Whoa. I um, sent a sample you got you know Shell Hamilton she's in with your podcasting yeah. she 
not using that. Hold on. She screen shared with me and started creating a new one. But she said the Canva. same thing. She's like, your cover art has to be. I mean, I technically know to how to use Canva, but I don't have any design, you know, DNA. So, <laughs> so she actually, hopefully, and that's what that's literally our current barrier. Because as just mentioned, she's got podcasting school for women, which yeah. I am a member of. And in the very first workshop, it's you know, get your cover art done. So I literally yeah. haven't gone to move part two yet because I can't. I'm one of those people that I just tell me how to do it and I'm gonna do exactly what you say. I don't need to yeah. I don't need to recreate it. I don't need to ask a million questions. This is what Jess says to do. This is I'm I'm good with that. So yeah. um so literally we this is like episode ten of this, I think, but we're gonna be this week. One of the things that Shell said to me, and I'd love your opinion on this, she's like, think of all the people getting new iPads for Christmas that are gonna be looking for um, new podcasts to listen to. So True. That motivated me to get. I'm glad she went away um, without going away because I can see her, but not I hear her, but not see her. Yes, I mean, I think she's right, and I mean, it doesn't have to be anything you create in Canva is fine as long as it's not. I think on a white background. I feel like the white background stuff gets lost a lot of the time. Color. I don't even think you really need your faces on it. Just something color that pops, like the title really needs to pop. And the title is important. <laughs> You said that I just I just read something that said don't put your face on your on your podcast. A lot of people say that. And then you were saying I'm sorry, you were talking about title next. Yeah, the title really needs to be grabby too. But yeah, no, a lot of people say don't put your face on it because where's the incentive to listen if you if they don't know who you are? They need to the incentive needs to be in the title and the art really. So like depending on what the style is, is it something that appeals to them? So um, the face is sort of like a secondary and most people do well with their face on the cover, but I don't think it's like, Tim, you know, whoever, if you're well known, I think it's different, but even Chris Brogan, you know, that's what Chris says. He himself says, don't put your face on the cover. Um, and I kind of, I mean, I tend to agree only because I think a, a good piece of art will pull in a listener better than a headshot. Um, yes, yeah, so we did kind of flash flashes in the background and a microphone. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So that, it, would it looks good. that would definitely um, get my attention for sure. So yeah. So um, starting out again, starting out can be difficult. It's really just a matter of having the idea and getting it a recording done like as fast as humanly possible and really not um, dealing too much on the details. I think people get really bogged down with all the details of which mic and I have to order on Amazon and I can't start until I have this and that. Like my first couple shows are dreadful. Um, and, and I didn't get a good mic for, again, for a year. And even going back and listening, it's it hurts my ears. I can't believe I ever got a listener, um, which I guess will speak to the next part, which is content. If you don't have good content, you're in big trouble. But um, luckily, I mean, I had enough, I guess, good content where the quality of my microphone wasn't an issue. I hope it's not an issue for this either because I had to take my good mic down in order to be seen. I think that's part of what was my oh. my problem in Blab. So I apologize if my audio isn't very good for your podcast. But when you do Blab, um, there are some other factors that come into play. And, you know, every kind of podcast is different. A solo show is usually going to sound the best because it's just you. And then when you have Wi-Fi connectivity and then when you add video, um, you know, things can get a little uh, risky, I guess. So, um, you know, that's yeah, we're happens. taking this and putting it on YouTube and then also putting it on iTunes. So, yeah, we'll have to see. But I think we can tweak the quality a little bit. You know, just you can. I mean, and if I were you, I would do video and audio in iTunes. Extract the audio and have an audio podcast. So I don't know if that was your plan or if you were yeah, just that's our video. Plan. Um, but why not succeed in all the categories? The more listeners, the better. Yeah. So what, like, what can you do? So you, okay, like Karen and I were the perfect example. You are our 10th episode in, mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what do we do to get people to listen on iTunes? You know, how do you get, you know, some people start and all of a sudden they're number one. So one of the so things the I'm really grateful that I did when I started my podcast was, um, first of all, I automate a lot of my social media and I also automate the growth. So I'm not just tweeting to the same thousand people. I'm constantly making that audience bigger, 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 bigger. And then I have a rotation of just generic 
advertising on Lady Business Radio. And actually what I did was I stole old commercial taglines. So like I would do like, one of them would be like Lady Business Radio, strong enough for a man, but made for a woman. And then I would have the link to iTunes. And then okay. I would have like Lady Business Radio, good to the last drop, and then the link to iTunes. And I was constantly sending people to iTunes. And then when I would do an episode, after I got out of the new and noteworthy part was when I started sending people to my website. So at first I would send them to iTunes. And then after I stopped pushing to rank is when I just started sending people to, because I really, you know, the rank is not as important as the traffic because your website is really where you can sell whatever it is you're selling to monetize. Mm. iTunes, you can do nothing but get a listener. That's it. Hopefully, they're in front of their computer so they can check out your website or friend you or you know whatever. But for the most part, you really want them to be on your website. So I started sending people to my website for episodes, but I still had those three a day constantly sending people to iTunes who didn't know what the show is about. And actually, those are the things, Christina, that people end up sharing. They won't share an episode, but they'll just like retweet good to the last drop for some reason. And that's what really I think grows the listeners because they're sharing it to people who've never heard of me before, as opposed to someone who listens and know what it is. Like that's just a great way for them to support me uh, in a two second time frame. Carrie, Whereas, you, I think you missed. Did you hear what she does for the ads? No. Well, so tell her, I, so cool. I make like 50 little mini, um, little mini tweets and rotate them like every, one every eight hours, let's say. And what I did was I stole old advertising slogans. So I did, I was telling her I did like lady business radio, good to the last drop or lady business radio, strong enough for a man or lady business radio. You won't believe the you know, difference in smell or just whatever it is. Like, and I mean, oh I even borrowed some that didn't even make so sense, smart. but I knew it would make people laugh. And so this one, same thing. Like, right. if you wanted to do that, forget, see, and be heard, it wouldn't even necessarily need to be similar. You you know, you could do a lot of little mini jokes about not being seen and not being heard or, or you know, pictures of the monkeys like this and like this. Like, all kinds oh, of um, yeah. creative ways to show people, like, if you're not being seen and being heard, like, what's the difference between you and, you know, being in the closet and being out of the closet or being, <laughs> you know, or... You know, you might as well just. I wish I had one quarter of your creative brain. I oh mean, gosh. it doesn't pay the bills, but it is good in a pinch. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, know, you have to learn how to harness that and then monetize it. It's, that's the part that's difficult. But thank you. I really appreciate that. Being creative is, it's always been fun, but it, you know, it, it does irritate on occasion. And uh, <laughs> there, there's, a, there's a little business venture for you. Is What's you that? Could create you could create tweets for people's podcasts. Yes, I'm happy to help with that. Whenever people, I mean, it does just sort of roll off. I'd love to say the tip of my brain, but that's just weird. But like, yeah, it, it does kind of roll off to my tongue. Little creative and fun ways to just get people's attention, which is what your show is all about: getting right, seen, right. being heard. I mean, yes, I mean what you were saying earlier about authenticity, absolutely. But boy, if you can harness a sense of humor and somehow just poke a little sense of humor in each little thing you do, I mean, your visibility will shoot through the roof because so few people have the guts to do that. Yeah. You know, that being funny makes a difference, even if it's just a little tongue in cheek, you know? No, I agree with that. I, I, I just spoke at an event this week and I love when I can make people laugh. Yeah. You know, just like self-deprecating, but it, it is, it's funny. And, you right. know, and then I think they just relate to you better. Absolutely. They relate to you better yeah. because it's, and also for me, it's always been like a defense mechanism. Like if I make them laugh about me, then they won't talk about me later and say the thing that I already know they're going to say, you know, like about how my hair, you know, is all crazy. Yes. Like if I mention it, then yeah. you know, they're not just like, that girl's smart, but damn, her hair is crazy. You know, <laughs> I know. I see myself. Jessica, it's hysterical you say that because that Marcus Labonis yesterday, that's exactly what he did. He came in and told us like his deepest, darkest secrets. And he had people stand up and we're all like, oh, God, please don't kick me. Don't kick me. But go in front of a microphone and do the same thing. Because he yeah. said, if you can be vulnerable and, you know, people can see you're real and you're human, isn't that who you want to do business with? Absolutely. And, I mean, in order to do that, you have to get real comfortable with your flaws and yes. not give yourself such a hard time. I mean, you can still – I still give myself a hard time in my head, you know, or I don't always feel good about my – 
shortcomings, but if I, as long as I'm the first person to say them, it usually works out well, you know? Right. I can't, yeah. you know, and there's a limit. There's things that I will, you know, there's a, there's a part of me that goes, oh God, another vulnerable person. Like how many vulnerable entrepreneurs do we need to be? This I agree. Week, you know, right. I don't but cry. There's, another, there's a difference. Yeah, exactly. There's no cries. I don't want to so too many cries. That's right. right. But, but there's a thing about getting real that, that I think helps, right? Like you definitely want to get real. And I get that. Like, I don't know that you're ever going to get me to be like really vulnerable. I mean, I don't know. Do I really need to, like you said, cry about what's going on with my kids or this or that? Like I can talk about it, you know, but you're a um, Jersey girl. And, and you don't do that. Yeah. I know it's true. It's true. That would be so true. out of character just in general. That would be out of character. And, and you know what? And that's really what it is. It's, you know, you can definitely, like, I definitely, I like to poke fun at myself when I do, when I speak, but you know, and I tell people this too, like social media, there's no freaking camera in your living room. You people tell, know what you tell them and that's it. They don't right. know more than you tell them. So feel free to share what you think is com comfortable, you're comfortable sharing, but you don't have to worry that, you know, what's going to happen to your life because nobody knows anything more than that. But you yeah, know, some people but totally you do that, to it definitely lets people relate to you and that's what you want. You want people to be able to relate to you because when they can relate to you, then they feel like, you know, they're connected to you and that's how your business grows. Exactly. But that's the authenticity. Yeah. And like I said, right. that was that theme yesterday and you can't fake authenticity. I mean, this right. is, you know, Karen and I are here every Thursday. This is us. This is the real deal. Right. You know, hair, hair that got rained on on the today. Today. <laughs> Your hair is so cool though, Karen, you have great hair. It's like all flowy and down set. It's so flat. I, I literally it rained on my way in and I parked like a half a mile from the door. So I was she walking great in, by the way, hair. a suede jacket. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Anyway, yeah, no, I agree. I like to call the authenticity controlled vulnerability. Oh, I like that. Because I like that. Um, you're, you know, when people say, oh, I have to get vulnerable and they instantly have like a panic attack about sharing everything about themselves. Like, it's not really about that. It's about you controlling the message. You still have to reveal some part of yourself, but there's vulnerable and then there's TMI, right? So controlled vulnerability is talking about how you can't cook or maybe you got in a car accident or your hair looks weird today. Um, TMI is like if you have marital issues, you know what I mean? Like that's the kind right. of stuff that I feel like feel free to not be that vulnerable with the rest of right. us, you know, like right. have, you know, have all the boundaries you need because it's, um, don't make people uncomfortable, but being vulnerable right. is, yeah, it is about shortcomings, but on, the, on a surface level, a party level, a cocktail party level, you know? Right. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny too. Like I do, I know, I know Jesse, you do, and Jessica and Christina, you do too. I do a lot of speaking and I am, I'm going to, um, here's my admission. I am not all that are, Mm. I do better when I wing it to some degree. When I bring, when it's me, more than it's really thought out and really planned out and really organized. And you can tell when you watch speakers, you can tell who memorized their talk yeah. and who is just talking because they're they yes. know their topic, you know. And they and they can go like I I just talk I did today I I I got no information on who was in the room, so I basically said tell me all who you are because I need to. I needed to right. tailor the talk to their job yeah. description. I don't know if they were all VIPs, you know, vice presidents, or if they were all, you know, receptionists. I have no idea. So I, I went in there kind of winging it, and I think that I do better that way. But I think it's because of that, that's where I'm authentic, as opposed to me writing a script and sticking to a script, and you know, um, and I think people feel that they need to do that to be successful. And I think you don't. I think you're more successful when you know your when you know your shit inside yes. and out and then you talk and it. and um rev council said something good and that's what i do too it says he uses his slides as prompts me too and like my slides are i don't even have yeah. bullets well karen knows i do pictures but it just keeps me on track because i'm such a talker that i could go so far off that that just helps me hone in but i'm not yeah. you know i'm not reading slides it's just a picture yeah. to guide me i do pictures and bullets too and i totally get off topic but um um, yeah, I, I feel like I'm better off the cuff too, but actually Karen, when I say to you, like, I'm better off the cuff, like I'm a much better speaker when I'm not so, um, organized, but to that point, I've never done a Ted talk cause I'm definitely afraid I'll never be prepared enough. 
I understand. Because you completely. can't just wing a TED talk. It's got to be like a certain right, time right. and a certain topic, and you've got to wow them, and they've got to stand up and, and applaud when they're done. And like, that's a lot of pressure for me. Who just is like, what's up, y'all? I'm here right. to entertain. Woohoo! Talk about social media. Like, that's right, a lot well, of pressure. And, and now you're freaking me out because when I spoke at the event on Wednesday, I happened to sit across from a woman who is running a TEDx thing and has invited me to apply. So that's on the fucking line. Oh, wow. I mean, it's something, it's a skill I definitely want. And I think it would make my shows better. Like yes. my podcasts are very off the cuff. This interview, that stuff's very off the cuff. But like, it's sort of like back of my head, I'm thinking like, what could I accomplish if I, if I maybe prepared a little, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> would it be a? I mean, because you I know don't what I think that, that, and Jessica, that's why I wanted to bring this. But, you know, and that's why I wanted to bring this up because when you're doing, if you're doing a podcast, a podcast is definitely something that can help you get seen yeah. and heard, right? But you have to be ready to. You have to know that it's. You have to have be able to have conversations that you can certainly have questions prepared. You know, and and it's probably yeah. a good idea. I don't tend to do that, but it's yeah. probably a good idea. But I think that. I think that people get to know you and that's when they're going to yeah. want to come back and listen to the next one. They're going to, they're going to have enjoyed your personality and that's how you, I think that's a way you can grow your, your podcast or your, your YouTube channel or whatever it is. Um, I mean, look at all the, all the advances in like lab and Periscope. People are really, you can't not be authentic yeah. on Periscope. You just can't, you can't fake it. Every I definitely single time need you get to tell Periscope. you that the key to getting more listeners is personality. If you do not have an interesting personality, just do us all a favor and don't bother. You can't learn that. It's not going to grow in on you. Um, if you find that you're generally, I don't know. I think, I don't know, because I've never been that kind of person. But I can just say that if you don't wow people with your personality, you already know this probably and maybe not podcast. And just write. Because <laughs> you can, it's a little more controlled. Because I think when you're, when you are podcasting, Right. Yes. But, but be okay. You know, there's that's where vulnerability people comes in, though. People people, know there are going to be people, people that don't like you. If you are boring or so stupid or arrogant or full of right. yourself or not know what you're talking about or BS, that people know right away. Right. Um, and so if you're if, if you're, you know, faking it till you make it, that's right. fine for your tech, but not necessarily your content. And um, yeah, it's just right. So Sandra's asking, Sandra asked, is this a podcast? And Sandra, what we're doing and what we what we talked a little bit earlier about is we're using this interview on multiple platforms. So we record it here on Blab, so it stays on Blab. We're uploading it to YouTube. So we have a YouTube channel for Get Seen, Be Heard TV. And then we're also going to be um, uploading it to iTunes as the audio, because Blab strips out the audio for you, right? So in a, all you really need is that process. You don't need a lot of... Um, you, yes. you know, for a little bit of extra right. work, you have multiple audiences for the same piece of content. And then you can, like Jessica, you can tweet all over the place and share it. So it's a great way. That's why I love Blab. See, it will be interesting, though, to see the that's audio. That's the thing. is like Elsie and I, like I said, we did one Blab, blab and it was a little okay. Wonky. And the second Blab, I had so. the same problems that I had here earlier. And then I had to unplug my good mic. And now I'm sitting here thinking, this is so much fun. Elsie and I should do this every week. And I'm just like, but I will sound terrible. And then our podcast, then I feel like, because Elsie is, she's a professional podcaster, you know, and she works for Libsyn and like the audio piece for her is way more important than seeing right. our faces. So if I have to um, sacrifice audio, she'd rather not blab because it needs to sound crisp and clear. And, and I was just saying to Christina, like, I really hope that right. I didn't mess up by unplugging that and not trying to work with it more. I was just, I felt a little rushed. So I unplugged it and it seemed to have worked, but like, that's something I really, you know, I don't know if my audio even for the show is going to sound good. I hope it does enough. I mean, then that's why I told her, that's why content's important. Well, we'll see. I mean, listen, we'll see. I really like this platform. So as much as I want the iTunes search database, you know what I mean? This as much really as I want fun. that too, we, you know, yeah. we'll see what happens when... Um, when we yeah, start putting it up there, which hopefully will be in the next week or two. Well, it's, it's just one up. episode. Christina I just put a link into I, our YouTube channel. The way channel. it is now, we can't link is to the channel, but I think you can watch that video and then subscribe oh, okay. to the channel. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Yeah, the blabs oh, okay. are super fun. I wish it was just a well. crazy long link. But, yeah, so we did an intro and outro for YouTube. We'll, 
We'll do the same for um, iTunes. What would be cool is if um, you could blab in Periscope at the same when the time. time comes. <laughs> We've Hopefully done that. Now. That's how I learned how to do it separate, right? No, I held my phone like this. It was yeah. just right oh, here, okay. and I was like this, showing you me, and showing separate. the thing. And, yeah. But what did we have? It was something crazy, like yeah. 184 people on, on Periscope for yeah. my first one. It's really it was, fun. It's all really Periscope, fun, but yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. You know, I actually did that one time. I did that one time because I have, I can broadcast on Facebook. So I had Facebook Live. So I had Facebook Live up. And then next to Facebook, I had Periscope up. And I tried to do like one broadcast yeah. on both platforms. But it was too weird to be looking at the wrong, like each camera. Like I didn't like, like one camera yeah. had the side of my face the whole time. The other camera, like it was just, I, I didn't like it. As much as it gave me double the, yeah. the, the yeah. visibility, it, is fun, I, yes, it didn't yeah. work for me. So Jess, tell us, tell us if, if we were going to start, so tell our audience, if they were going to, if they're thinking about a podcast or thinking about turning this, like what are the first couple things you want to think about? We talked about you need to have great art. We talked about a great name. Um, do you, tell me this. Do you, is there a difference in your mind in success between solo podcasts or, or people with co-hosts? I feel like people it's a matter of preference. Like, I hate to even or is it a matter of because I'm so tired of interview shows having done one myself that, um, I don't know that I'd be most apt to listen to that. I'm at this point in my listening, and again, because I just did one for two years, and now I'm a little, I'm a little over it, but trying to get back to it. I don't know, but I, I'm more apt to listen to solo and coach, but that doesn't in any way um, change the um, success of it. In fact, if you have a good interview show and it's kind of like a late night talk show, I think those can be the most successful because it's different every time and the chemistry is different and. Um, I mean, you guys have kind of the perfect combo because you can talk to each other and then you bring the guests on. So it's sort of a, it's like you guys are like Conan and Andy. And then once in a while, someone will come out and like entertain the rest of you. But you really have the best of both worlds. So actually, I think your platform is probably the best. But um, well, of course, <laughs> as far as doing them, the solo shows are faster like oh, to get thank you. Um <laughs> Well, maybe that's not even true because you're not accountable right. to anyone but yourself. It depends. It really depends. Um, I think it doesn't matter the platform as long as you have really good content that people want to listen to. Um, the, the second thing, once you've talked about title and cover art, is time. How much time can you um, put into recording, editing, and promoting? Those are the three. I mean, you know, by promoting, I also mean uploading it to your website. Um, because it's not just talking into a mic and then ta-da, it's there. Um, a, a successful podcast will require a pretty good amount of promotion and a pretty good amount of telling people that it's live and telling people to listen and reminding people it's there and telling them what you talked about this week. You can really never shut up about your show once it's started um, or your downloads will start to, you know, your listens will start to tank, at least for me. Um, that's what happens. So I automated a lot of that stuff because I don't have the time. Okay. I, I don't barely have the time to do the recording part. So a lot of. Right. But I think that but you can automating is so easy now. There's so many tools to automate that, you yeah, know, it's okay. Twitter, it's taking the time. Fun. And we just did a Twitter workshop on Monday, Monday. And we literally taught people yeah, it's how to automate teaching people how to do what, it. We're, what we're talking about here. So. But it's, um, I mean, and also automating the guest maintenance yeah. too, like the way right, you have right. like so schedule here and then an automated, right. here's what's going to happen for the show. Like that part's really vital as well. It's a time suck, these shows. Right, right. Cool. Oh, I know what I was going to ask you. So, so do you yeah. think... So you, I know you do some. I know yes. you're doing some work with sponsorships now, like helping people get their sponsor packages ready. So we talk a lot in the show about growing your social media platforms so that you have yeah. numbers because numbers are impressive. In some, in some ways, you need to have numbers because that, especially if you're looking for a sponsor. So do you think like adding iTunes number, like numbers on iTunes, matter for that perspective? Like is it the same concept? Like if you don't have the numbers. You know, you know that, that classical, you like a classic deal? Um, podcast advertising only looks at downloads. So if you are a person that has a new show and you don't have a lot of downloads, the, the general 
um, understanding is that you're not ready for an advertiser. You won't get an advertiser. That said, Karen, I mean, you've been a LinkedIn speaker and I, I'm sorry, Christy, I'm not as familiar with your platform. Oh, and then she disappeared. Um, uh, but, but I'm more, I'm more familiar. You know, I know that Karen has a pretty wide platform and if you guys wanted to get a sponsor for this show now, I'm assuming cause you're in PR based on your platform, based on hers, your podcast, even though it would be you selling time on that show, you also sell space on your website. Um, you sell repetition on your social media channels. There's a lot to sell besides just listeners and downloads. It's just that because that's how the medium has functioned up until now, that's what most people think. So my mission is sort of to try and get people to monetize their shows a little earlier based on the platforms they've already created. Because for me, I have had an online business since 2005. So just because I've had my show three months, so what? I still have 5,000 followers on Twitter. I still have 5,000 people on my email list. Like who wouldn't want access to those people? Don't tell me it's gonna be $15 per thousand downloads per episode. I think I still won't even get that two years later. But I've still, but I've made a couple grand a month on sponsorships because I've had, I've built a community that's um, sellable, you know, that's that's worthy of um, selling that someone right. else might want to um, advertise to. And so, yeah, I think the social media community is personally, I think it's way more important than the podcast downloads. Although, if you're really not getting anybody to listen, you may want to rethink that whole platform itself. Um, but a new show like yours, and I mean, I don't know your numbers, but I, like I was telling Christina, I'm pretty familiar with your platform, Karen, and there's no reason you couldn't get somebody's, um, money to talk to your audience a little bit, especially listeners like Bonnie is, would be, a, sorry to call you out, Bonnie, but she's very <laughs> active on the show at the moment. And, you know, I know that she has courses and things that are also about visibility. They're on Periscope or whatever. And you guys will be great partners. She's obviously a huge fan of yours. And hopefully you guys are a fan of her. Look, she says always willing for a shout out, right? <laughs> but I mean, but, but if you go to your audience first, because you know that they have a vested interest in the people you're talking to, and you can start small, $50, $100 a month, we'll mention you on the show. We'll put a banner on our site. We'll put a little logo in our email. I mean, that's worth, you know, you get three or four of those. It doesn't have to be like a 30 second commercial spot, kind of like your CBS radio. I mean, you can redefine it however you want so that you're at least paying your expenses right off the bat. Now, not every podcast can do that. You guys have, right. you have a right. platform. People who have right. no platform, no nothing, or starting out from scratch, it's going to take right. you a little while. Build that social media. That's well, yeah, that's about. the key. And that's what, you know, one of the big things with Karen that we talk about, yeah. you know, we, we have a mutual client that um, something happened and we were trying to reach out to celebrities and journalists and, and Karen's like, I can't do it. They've got three Twitter followers. I can't. Yeah. So we had to go, kind right. of go in the back door where I kind of had to lead the way in. And but it's it's really it means a lot to have those numbers. Yeah. I mean, it means a great deal when you're monetizing for sure. And there's yeah. been a couple clients I've had that our brand new podcast, but she's had, she's had a business for 10 years. She's a very successful blog and, a, and, you know, and, and they're a um, interior designer. So she has beautiful portfolio and I created a media kit that can get her a sponsor right away. Like I don't even mention the downloads because frankly, I mean, like it's the only podcast that covers this topic. There's no way it's not going to get bigger. And even if it doesn't, even if let's just say she has a hundred listens, if you had a business that, like went just to interior designers, how would you not want to advertise on there? It's still a right. hundred potential clients. It's not right. nothing, you know I mean? It's to us because we're always thinking in terms of more, more, more. It may sound small, but you know, um, if you just are selling to those people, it's a, it's a great opportunity. Cool. All right, we, Does we're, anybody want to jump on? I was on? just going to say, we're like it, taking all your time. I know somebody was trying to get on and we were right in the middle of everything. So, Hop in, come back. So am I supposed to go away? Yeah. Or no. No, no, no. Okay. no, that way they can ask you questions. Anybody wants to Oh yeah. yeah. Anybody wants questions. to jump on and talk to Jess. But that's Let's that's a, that's fascinating though that you can talk about sponsorship when you've just started. You know, because yeah. you've got a platform and um, I never have a platform. Yeah. 
And you know what? I mean, I know how to do all the tech stuff, but I don't have that creative brain that you two have to be able to do all of that. So that's why I that's why we work together. That's why I need you. That's why I started exactly. creating exactly. media kits for people because part of that is getting the person in a mind frame of okay, this is what I I do have something to sell. This is what I have to sell. Yeah. And really, once you look through your own media kit, you're like. Dang, that's kind of awesome. You know, you don't realize what you've accomplished and how. Um, gosh, why is this word on the tip of my tongue? It's not sellable, saleable. What is the word when you marketable? Yes, marketable, marketable, but also you know, um, desirable. Let's say. I'm okay. attacking the it. mic. Hello? Hi, Sandra. Sandra. Hi, Sandra. Can you hear oh, me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, my yeah. dog is about to like bark because he needs to go outside. How are you, Jess? Good. How are Sandra, you? I'm in your neck of the woods. I'm in uh, I'm in Boston. You are? Oh my god! I'm in your neck of the woods. Yeah. Well, you're supposed to be talking with a Boston accent. Oh, that is. I don't even know if I. Is that not one of the worst accents you've ever heard ever? The Boston oh, yeah. accent. <laughs> Wicked Sandra, horrible. Sandra Bird Jacobs from Listen, Life Is Good is from Boston. Boston. My dog's and, about to bark. So hold on, hold on. Oh, she has it. A dog's gonna bark. Did you ever see can, that show? Can I can't remember the name of it, but it was a Boston. Yeah. Yeah, we can. Hear okay. This. There was a show with a Boston family. It was a sitcom. It was not that long ago. Yeah. Um, and they had like, you know, like if you checked on like their on demand, they had like their their um all the different characters learning how to speak in a Boston oh accent. Oh hilarious. my god. That was, so funny. that was the funniest part of the whole show. Watching. That's that. a riot. So I had to stop on stop in because my two girls are here and Jess, you're. <laughs> Jess, you're a freaking riot. Look at now you have two ghosts, Christina. They're yeah. in ghost, they're in audio <laughs> only. I scared them away. Oh, here comes Karen. Oh, I can so, still see him. Yeah, so I love um everything you guys are saying. And my friend Thanks. Bonnie is in here, and Bonnie has been a great uh supporter of mine and vice versa. Uh so definitely great stuff. Um I was inspired by all of it. And just a word on sponsors. It doesn't. It definitely does happen. I actually have a show three times a week. Um, it's called the Blab Rehab. Karen was one of my guests a few weeks ago. What a great name! Yeah, it's it's okay. not a place, Jess, for people to go that are just psychos that talk too much. Blab Rehab, like no, that's not the place. It's a place for um, people to go to leave in in a positive state, right? So they get inspired, they lift people up, they learn tips, they help, they help each other. So it's been going really well. Um, I've as of tomorrow, I've been on Blab 100 days. I'm going to have a special show, and I have a little announcement, too, tomorrow. Um, and about a month back, I was thinking of sponsorship. Um, I ran a charity for 12 years, and we were always looking for sponsors for, for special events and things. So I'm like, you know what? What the hell? I'm going to try. So I had mentioned it to a friend who connected me to another friend, and um I thought, you know, when we're on, we need to look good, especially for, especially today. I need to, well, I I need to look much. good. Today, I don't have any lights or any makeup on, but I, I purchased lights on Amazon because I want to invest in myself and I have a great microphone. And so I'm thinking one day, like, damn, what kinds of things do my listeners like to hear about and what do I need myself? I got kind of selfish. So I'm like, I need good makeup. So I told this to my friend one day, and she connected me to a friend of mine. Her name's Mary Kay Kemper. It's, she's not Mary, the Mary Kay. In fact, she has the wrong name because her company is called Limelight by Alcon. And their, their mission statement is to make people feel, make women feel fabulous. So I'm like, shit, this is a perfect matchup. So we connected, and she's like, I want to sponsor all your shows, and I want to give you free makeup, too. I'm like, okay, then. Wow. That's so, amazing. So I announce her on all my shows. I will put a link on my website, you know, any way that I can tweet anything. And so, but the wonderful part is not only is that a win-win for me, it's it's a double win-win for her because I'll, you know, you guys know I'm a crazy personality. So during a show, I'll pretend I'm putting lipstick on and I'll hold it up and do a little infomercial or one of her products is like 10 years younger, it's called. So I was squirting it on and we sold like six bottles of it during the show. Like didn't That's even try. Amazing. So, like, any kind of shit is possible on here, ladies, seriously. Yeah. So, again, like Jess That's said, great. if you have the personality and you know who you could collaborate, collaborate with, I call it, go for it. Just ask. Just ask. You don't know. So I'm so. enthralled by that. You know, um, that actually, uh, that made me think of something, and then it quickly just left right away. Um, 
Yeah, the makeup thing, you know, that's one of the reasons I don't do video as often, for sure, is because yeah. I have to get yeah. I have to get up and get up. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, you're actually creating what I like to call a win-win-win because it's not just about what a great partnership it is, but the fact that your audience probably really needs that stuff and doesn't know where to get it, even if yeah. it's not exactly your thing, the fact that you have a sponsor yeah. that sells makeup that you trust and appreciate, like, it yeah. takes all the work out for them trying to figure out what to get. Yep. And I mean, so it's, it's fun though. It's yeah. definitely fun though. It's not salesy or creepy. Yeah. Um, you know, we're not holding something up going, go to the website right now. It's 1999. Like it's just fun. And if it doesn't flow and fit, exactly. <laughs> I know. It, I have my clue. If it doesn't flow, <laughs> if it doesn't flow and fit <laughs> in, girl. if something doesn't flow during that show, I won't mention it. Uh, I don't even have mine. And I'm talking about my damn sponsor. You guys are like, she's lying. She's not even talking about a sponsor. But um, it's funny because when you talk about the win-win, right? We'll have a lip contest yeah. when we're done. When, when we talk about the win-win. So what happened, Jess, on one show was, here we are talking about my sponsor and the lipstick, right? And selling lipsticks randomly. My sponsor was my guest when I introduced her. And she starts saying shit about my products, saying forward cards. And I sold a shit on those. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. I had no it idea that she was going to say it. It just came out of her mouth. I didn't tell yeah. her what to say. So yeah. it's yeah. just nat you just have to be natural and be yourself and just kind of go with the flow. And if it so you're a you're a success story. Shit. And you know what, Sandra, like you... Right, you don't give a shit if people like you or I not, really frankly. Because you know there's going to be enough people that do, and that's who you want to connect yeah. with. If they don't, and people that don't, if cares. they don't, remember the Saturday right. Live, Karen? Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> yeah. I just well, say yeah, bye bye, yeah. and they yeah. walk away. So you know what? You do what you do. You're just yourself. But you guys also should, you get. I, I was telling Christina in the chat. We met like what two weeks ago, and I feel like mm -hmm. I've known both of you ladies for Forever. like three years. That's nice. So. It's really great things are happening on here. And I really feel like Blab is a blessing in my life. Yes. And I feel like, you know, for years now, I've been into social media and inspiring people. And hands down, this platform rules because I really feel like God put it on a platter and said, here you go. Go be my messenger and go inspire people because now right. they can see you and hear you. I like Although my family inspiration with like the F word. Yeah, I do. Fuck it. I don't really care. I'm going to hell. I'm going to hell because I party and I inspire, inspire people. I don't know. I don't know. I like I it because she's like, do. start meditating and shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, one year. When, uh, are we allowed to cry? I didn't know this was a cursing show. Is that allowed? <laughs> well, we're trying. I might have to bleep you out, but yeah, when I edit. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so See, funny. every time you curse, I see Christina going, there's another piece of work I got to. Yeah. I, oh, shit. You're yeah. making a to-do list with the, yeah. with the seconds in time. Let's see. We're at 349 minutes. I gave up uh, a funny story about my potty mouth. One year, you know, I'm Catholic, and I give something up for Lent, right? Or I used to. So, like, yeah. I've given up chocolate, and I've given up this, and I've given up that. So, one year, I'm like, I'll be a good Catholic girl and give up swearing. And like it lasted one day. I started Why? saying like I started saying like shit and suck. And my husband's like, um, you failed. And I'm like, those don't count. I was just gonna give up the F word. And he's the like, first no, one counts. Forget the it. One might not. My hairdresser says to me, you should just give With up chocolate. God. She goes, just give up chocolate. I like it better when you swear. Yeah, just eat like fish that. and say the F word. Come on. <laughs> Or you can be like my, my best friend's son. I was driving him to school years ago. The kids are in elementary school. Yeah. And he looks out the window and the snow is melting. And, you know, spring is coming. He goes, I think I'm going to give up sledding for Lent. Great. <laughs> like, no snow left. Oh, gosh. So Good. Good, yeah. good idea. But no, right. great things That's happening good. here good. and learning things and inspired. I like to inspire, but I'm, I'm inspired by all the people that I Thank meet, you. including you three ladies today. Thanks, well, Sandra. Same here. Same Thank here. You. I'm so glad you popped on. It's great to meet you. Yeah, I'll definitely. I'll hop on. Maybe my friend Bonnie will hop in and say hello if she's okay. still here. All right, I love bye Bonnie. guys. Tell <laughs> hey, tell a little Hi, bird people. These ladies are good. Tell a little freaking bird. <laughs> yeah. Because the birds tell all the other birds, and then there's a That's shitload right. of birds in here. So yeah. tell a bird. All right, bye. See you bye. Nice Thanks, Sandra. Bye. I didn't know she was gonna have that accent. Oh, she funny. Boy, oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> so you insulted her before you knew she were getting you were insulting her. Good job. Hi, Bonnie. Yeah. Hi, Jess. Hey, Bonnie. Hi, guys. All right. Seriously. How you doing? Sandra.
the first thing she asks is, can you hear me? Are you kidding me? I know. Everyone <laughs> can hear I her can hear you. always. <laughs> oh, oh, that's funny. So, Sandra's doing an event. I'm going to give you a plug for your event, Sandra. Sandra has these cards called, oh gosh, Sandra, write them in the thing. The words went right out of my head. Forward. Um, but anyway, she, Say it forward, right, say it forward. So Sandra's going to Grand Central Station on December 10th, and she's going to give everybody these say it forward cards um, in this share, spread the love kind of thing. So I'm hoping if I'm in town, I'm gonna join her and we're gonna say it forward all over Grand Central Station next month. Oh, cool. I love that. I know, she keeps telling me, she's like, just fly to New York. I'm like, I cannot fly to New York. They Where hand out the Bonnie? paper, I'm sorry. I live Where in St. Live? Louis. Oh, that's peanuts. Right. Exactly. So I'm really glad that you talked about like all the parts of podcasting. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have even known about the art part yeah. of it. I, I wouldn't have never thought about that. Yeah. So that was really good to know. And what has totally kept me from it is, um, is the editing because I know that would take so long and I don't have any. Let me tell you, Bonnie, even before Jessica says the professional answer, I, I have ScreenFlow that I learned how to use. I have a Mac, and I probably spend 10, 15 minutes a week tops doing it. It's, it's not as crazy as you think it would be. Wow. Well, it depends on what you want to get out of your show. I tend to like shows that are less edited. So I, as a result, I don't edit my shows. Um, she podcasts, I have to admit, Elsie edits. Mm -hmm. And if I know Elsie, she probably is like minute by minute, second by <laughs> second going through um, just because that's the way she is. But My Lady Business Radio never, I only edited it one time and that's because the guest came back after we recorded and asked me to take something out. That's the only time I've reheard a Lady Business Radio episode ever um, and not just like done the, you know, the, the bumpers. Right. So, um. You don't have to edit. I will say this though, my solo shows I tend to edit because it's just me. And because the audio, I remember I was saying how much different the audio is when it's just you um, and you have a good mic and it's just you in a garage band. It's very clear. And as a result, there's a speech impediment I'm trying to hide that I didn't know I had where whenever I start a sentence, I go and I make a little click and it drives me hmm. insane listening to it. So. I, but now I've gotten to a point where, you know, even if I do like a 20, 30 minute solo show, I can look at my audio and I see exactly where you that where goes. stupid yeah. click is and I can just take it out. Yeah. Really? Cause I mean, because it's really skinny and short. I mean, it's like, I mean, if you're looking at an audio, like a, an audio wave. Right. Some of them, I've like, seen when those. You go, Woo, they're, they're kind of fat and, yes. and wide. This one is very skinny, but tall. And so I'm just like, there it is. Yeah, and just clip yeah. it right out. I can take it out. But, I mean, even that only takes me, like, five minutes. So, so are you depends. clipping it out with GarageBand, or what are you clipping yes. it out with? I clip it out with GarageBand. You can use GarageBand. You can use Audacity, which is free. If you know um, Adobe Audio. And I do it in ScreenFlow. You can, t you can separate you know the audio out. Yes. And, and I think ScreenFlow was 50 bucks. Like forever. not even probably. Yeah. Screenflow yeah. is very good. I've done it in Screenflow too. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can do it in, but yeah, I mean, it just takes a second depending on what you want out of your show. And again, Elsie is a professional and she, you know, she, the audio for her needs to be perfect. So I don't know what she's editing out of either one of us. Probably she's just marrying the stuff together and I don't right. know, maybe if there's right. dog in the background, she'll take out the dogs and stuff. Like that's just her thing. I would leave yeah. it in. In fact, you guys, anyone who's ever heard my show knows that stupid cat has been in, Almost right. every episode. I kind know. of wait for it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Not anymore. She just died <laughs> oh, last wow. week. But um, yeah, she, she was old. Oh, no. Anyway, so, um, so yeah, the editing doesn't need to be an issue. Really, for me, the time consuming part is writing the show notes and the social media, uploading the show, and then going from uploading it to the host. Then you put it on the website, scheduling it, and then scheduling all the social media. It's still the whole thing. In not including recording really only needs to take you like a half hour, 45 minutes once you have a system down. Mm -hmm. So do you do most of that? Like, do you write the show notes? When I something was have to still do? doing an interview show like you guys were doing, it, like if I were Christina right now, I would have either an iPad in front of me and I would be typing bullets. 
I actually even made this as easy as possible. See, so she's writing it. I would be typing it so that I wouldn't have to re go back in. I would, would type the bullets in Evernote, and then I would use those bullets to make the tweet. So if, like, for example, mm -hmm. one of the bullets was just talks about how you don't need um, big downloads for sponsors, I would just turn that that show note right into a tweet. Listen now to hear Jess Kupferman talk about how, you know, I just regurgitate all my show notes so that I'm not rewriting and rewriting and rewriting over and over. I just made it as easy as possible. It might be a little more difficult because you that. can see her. So, like, you have to be careful with whether or not you're, you know, but, I mean, you can't, if I'm typing right now, you can't tell. You may be able to hear it. That's you might hear it, though. That's why I used to use a, um, an iPad because you can't hear it as much. Mm -hmm. um, but you can still do Evernote or Google Drive. And then, again, I would just take it, make the tweets from that, and then put it in a queue and rotate it on whatever day my show day was. So um, I try to make everything as systematic and easy as possible so that I wasn't reinventing the wheel where I would do what Christine is doing, where I would write notes, and then I'd have to transcribe them, and then I'd have to make new tweets tweets and new Facebook paragraphs, whatever I put. Right. In See, that's what I'm envisioning. Tweets. That's exactly what I'm envisioning. Stop. See, but you know what, Jess, that's why it was yeah. so important to me to monetize this as soon as possible, because I know I'm going to have to hire people to do this. Like I said to Christina right from the beginning, like my, I, all the stuff that was on my to-do list, I finally gave to my VA in my head thinking, I'll just pay her. But then when we monetize we this, just it Christina, what if we just, yeah. you know, we'll deduct her costs from it. And you know, of course, it's nowhere near as right now. I'm doing it all for the money, cast, you know, it's um, time consuming. It's part of the reason why the money cast isn't consistent right now because I can't find the time to do it. And because I'm trying to monetize right. she podcast, and that's more of a priority to me than making sure the money cast episodes are consistent. I want to make sure that that community is taking like that I'm taking advantage of all the things we've ever created and, um, you know, and setting like podcasting school for women, for example, is a perfect example. Like, we created that course. And I want it to go on home study. And rather than, you know, do the money cast, I'm just like, okay, well, I need to create Facebook ads for this. And I want to do a pop-up on this. You know, I want to have a nice, I want to just optimize everything I've ever created before I focus mm -hmm. on new stuff. That's my focus right now. But it's hard. It's very hard. So, right. um, yeah, so the money cast. Right. Is, is there, can you? Is, can you still buy you can. Um, Actually, access we, to we split it into two, so it's like or is it four weeks of Could you sure. put the link it's, in? Um, you can just go to shoepodcast.com forward slash shop, and yeah, I'll put it in here. Um, okay. You can buy it in two, in two sections. Um, the beginning section, if you're not ready to monetize, and then if you already have a show, you can buy the end section, so you just, just need to learn how to do what we're okay. talking about, yes. automate your marketing, and then start to get sponsors. Well, Michael O'Neill with the Solopreneur Hour, that was the first podcast I ever listened to. And he has some lady, Laura, the lovely Laura that he refers to, who yeah. does all of his show notes because he said it just took him so much time. And that was the very first thing he ever hired out for was show notes. Yeah, I mean, some people want really extensive show notes. I happen to not be one of those people because I feel like for me, the more extensive your show notes, why, why would they bother listening? I don't yeah. want a transcription. You want to tease them. Right? Yeah. I want to be, yeah, exactly. I want, I want like, check it out now, you know? Right. So I don't, so I don't do, but, but for she podcast, I mean, Elsie does do that on some level. She has much more detailed show notes and she does them. Cause she knows that I, I'm just like, just put it up. People will figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> Right, right. But you do want to put things like this, yeah, links to she, you know, she podcast. Yeah. We would put the links to our YouTube channel that we talked about a few times. So you definitely want to give people the resources. You I talk think she about would too, at least. Um, if, uh, she, I have to build her up to feel comfortable enough. But she had, she's she's outsourced the editing of the actual show, which is great. Um, but she still has not given away the show. I'm we're, we're working on it. It's important because your time is so valuable, and you don't want your yeah. time to be spent re-listening to something you've already What's said all that, you know right. I mean? it's exhausting and time can so somebody just put in the chat they said i don't want to read a right. book about a show uh just give yeah. me a link yeah. so all right well we are at the end right. of our hour karen and i try really hard to keep it an hour so it's you know like a podcast so jessica tell everybody how i mean you just posted that in in the um about shepodcast.com shop but where can everybody find you um jessica and then also she podcasts. 
That's where all my you. stuff is. Most of my stuff is on my website, though, JessicaCupferman.com. And then if you are a woman podcaster or ha aspire to be a woman podcaster, check out uh, ShePodcast.com and do the free, um, the free Facebook group. It's very active. Yeah, that's a great Facebook group, by the way. That free Facebook group she's mentioning, I'm in it. And I think oh, yeah. a couple of you yeah, guys are in it. Some people are posting and saying that. That's a good advice. And then next week we have um, Vivica Von Rosen, who um, is a LinkedIn specialist like Karen. Ooh. So with the two of them, it is going nice. to be amazing. I'm just going to sit really quietly and know, take right? note. Yeah, we're uh, But I put the link in there. So subscribe mm -hmm. now and you'll find out about it. Um, and then as Karen mentioned briefly, on Monday we did our first Lunch and Learn series. And there are some people, I think, who were on, at least on earlier. Gosh. It, it's $48. Karen gave that away in the first five minutes of the hour-long session. I mean, it was content, content, content. It was amazing. Wow. Uh, was so great. I had somebody, I had somebody yeah. today email me already saying that they were already getting people added to their email list for free yeah. with the techniques we, talk, we talked about. And she just started. I, I got, I got an email, week. too. It was so, amazing. Yeah, it's so we'll, um, and I don't know that... Next week, we'll put up a link so you can still go back and buy that Twitter one uh, or, you know, enroll in it. Oh, and take yes. the class. I, I put the link, and then yep. next month, oh, it's Monday, December 8th or 9th, but it's, I mean, I'll put it in here, prfasttrack.com. I am going to talk about Harrow, um, which is Help a Reporter Out and some other free services that, you know, it's out there. People don't know how to do it successfully. Um, I have success all the time with Harrow. I probably, what, Karen, probably at least once a month. You're always like, how are you doing this? I'm like, Harrow. Oh I'm like, wait, what? Great. Well, Jessica, do you remember when we were had Jessica and I had lunch a couple, about a month ago maybe? And um, there was uh, Amy yes. who oh, yeah. was with us, Amy Scott, who's a friend, mutual friend of ours. And she says, oh, yes, well, you know, um, Roberta yeah. was saying, that's my client. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that's Christina. That's me. Okay. Right. That's Hi. Christina, right. Hi. Christina, right. Hi. Christina, Hi. Christina, Christina, right. That's so funny. I'm like, I'm yeah. She's in them every month. You know? Roberta like, was hugely helpful in me starting to outsource my podcast because he does so many different things. I mean, it was yeah. really, he's indispensable to the company, if anybody yeah. is. Yeah. yeah, so that's, so I'm going to go dive deep in my, in my monthly one next month. Um, you know, how to do this successfully and how, I mean, I was in Forbes last month and I have a product-based business and PR for anyone. My sales skyrocketed. My book went back on the bestseller list and Amazon. I mean, it was amazing. So I want to show you guys how to be successful with these free media query sites. So you stand out in these 500 emails that they get. So they use you for a resource and how you can connect with them and build a relationship with them. So you can start getting in outside of Harold. So that's my little sales cool. plug. Go to prfasttrack.com. And, yeah, um, so what we're so basically thank, doing with these lunch and learns is we're just basically, the techniques we talk about here, we're basically just giving you um, in-depth in -depth, in -depth training on one specific thing each month. So last month was Twitter. December is um, Caro. I think January we're going to do LinkedIn because you know I got to get that one out there. And then we'll go yeah. from there. So yeah, so thank you so much, Jessica. That was amazing, amazing. Loved yes, thank it. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for jumping thank on, so Bonnie. Thanks for having me. It's been really fun. Enough so, where I might do a blab. I, it's so fun. It, it is, is fun, fun, isn't it? It's, you should totally do a blab. It's fun. So yeah. everybody check in thank with you. us next week, same time, same place, 2.30 Eastern time, and we'll have Vivica Von Rosen with us. Yep. See you guys. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you so much.